Hello everyone! Sa video na to, pag-usapan natin kung paano mag-evaluate ng limits ng iba't ibang polynomial, rational at radical functions. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started! Previously, napakita na natin yung iba't ibang limit theorems at i-apply natin ang mga yun sa pagkuha ng limit ng iba't ibang function na nandito sa series of slide na to. Subukan natin gamitin directly yung limit theorems tapos tingnan natin kung ano yung magiging result. Recall na isa sa mga limit theorems na napag-usapan natin previously ay yung quotient rule na ginagamit kapag ang given na function ay rational. Kung gagamitin natin yung quotient rule directly, makukuha natin yung limit of x squared minus 5x minus 6 as x approaches 6. All over the limit of x minus 6 as x approaches 6. Tapos, i-distribute natin tong limit sa bawat isang term using the sum or difference rule. So, ito ay magiging limit of x squared as x approaches 6 minus, uh, diretsyo ko na din yung pag-a-apply ng constant multiple rule. Dahil 5 ito, i-factor out ko na siya dito para mas mabilis yung ating solution. 5 limit of x as x approaches 6 minus the limit of 6 as x approaches 6. Same goes with the denominator. We have the limit of x as x approaches 6 minus the limit of 6 as x approaches 6. Kapag ito ay sinimplify natin, syempre ito may squared. So, pwede natin kuhanin muna yung limit of x which is 6 tapos square na lang din natin. Minus 5 times 6 minus ito ay constant na 6. All over 6 minus 6. Simplifying all the numbers, we have 36 minus 30 minus 6. All over 6 minus 6. At kapag ito ay kinuha na natin ng differences, sa numerator, we have 0. Sa denominator, ay 0 din. Ang tawag dito sa format na to, na numerator and denominator are both 0, we call this the indeterminate. At kapag ganito ang sagot, hindi siya acceptable for limit. In other words, yung solution na ginawa natin, for example, number 1, ito ay wrong solution dahil nag tayo sa isang answer na indeterminate. In other words, ang kailangan natin gawin ay unahin muna natin yung pagsisimplify ng given bago natin gamitan or applyan ng iba't ibang limit theorems. Tandaan ha, when you arrive with an answer na indeterminate, ganito yung format. Kailangan maghanap ka ng alternative solution para maiwasan mo itong answer na to kasi hindi siya acceptable sa limits. Talking about that alternative solution, ano kaya yung pwede nating magawa dito sa given function na ito? Kung mapapansin natin yung denominator na x minus 6, isa siya sa mga factors ng numerator. Pwede nating i-factor out muna yung numerator. Gawin nating x minus 6 times x plus 1. Diba kapag ito ay phenoyl method natin, ang, ma ang magiging answer lang ay itong x squared minus 5x minus 6. So, tama yung factoring natin. And the denominator is also x minus 6. Both the numerator and the denominator have a factor na x minus 6, kaya pwede natin yang i-divide. Doing that, maiiwan na lang sa atin yung x plus 1 and we will get its limit as x approaches 6. In this way, nasimplify muna natin yung given bago natin kukuha na ng limit para ma-avoid natin yung tinatawag na indeterminate. So, applying the limit theorems, we have here the limit of x as x approaches 6 and the limit of 1 as x approaches 6. So, applying the different theorems, we have here 6 plus 1 the answer is 7. 
And this is already the final answer for example number 1. So, yun ang unang technique na pwede nating makuha sa example number 1. Kung kayang ma-factor out yung given at makapag-divide ng same factors, gawin yun para maiwasan yung indeterminate form. Dito naman sa example number 2, I will leave it for you na gamitan agad ito ng mga limit theorems. Pero just to give you an idea, ang ending nito, kung gagamitan mo agad ng limit theorems, ay indeterminate na naman. So, kailangan nating mag-isip ano yung mga possible way para matanggal or ma-eliminate yung possibility na indeterminate yung maging answer. Subukan natin i-expand itong x plus 7 squared. So, to expand this quantity, you take the square of the first term, multiply the two terms, 7 times x is 7x, times 2, we have 14x, and then square the last term, 49, and then minus 49 all over x. Obviously, yung numerator, pwede itong ma-cancel out because they will lead to zero. Maiiwan na lang sa atin ay yung limit ng x squared plus 14x all over x as x approaches 0. At this point, kung gagamitan mo agad ulit ng limit theorem, makaka-create ka ng answer na indeterminate na naman yung format. So, may kailangan pa tayong additional step na gawin bago i-apply yung mga limit theorems. Take a look in the numerator, we have x squared plus 14x. Both of them ay may common factor na x. Kaya pwede natin iyong i-factor out. Factoring it out, we have here x times the quantity of x plus 14 all over x. And tulad nung ginawa natin sa first example, Pwede nating i-divide yung x at yung x dahil common factors na sila sa numerator and denominator. Ang continuation na lang ay limit of x plus 14 as x approaches 0. And I think hindi na tayo mag-a-arrive sa indeterminate form kasi wala ng fraction na involved. Pwede na nating gamitan ng limit theorems. The first term ay gagamitan natin ng limit of x that will just be 0. At ito ay limit of a constant 14. 0 plus 14, the answer is 14. Next, for example, number 3 naman, dito kailangan natin na kuhanan daw ng square root yung x minus 4 all over x minus 16. Kung gagamitan mo agad ito ng limit theorems, I am sure indeterminate na naman yung magiging answer mo. Kaya ang pwede natin gawin dito ay i-recall yung ibig sabihin ng conjugate tapos i-apply siya dito dahil meron tayong square root of x sa ating numerator. I know na ginagamit yung conjugate kapag ang ating square root ay nasa denominator. But this time, kahit nasa numerator siya, makakatulong yan para masimplify natin yung pinaka-given. So, subukan natin i-multiply siya sa conjugate, tapos tingnan natin kung ano yung magiging answer niya. Meron tayo dito na square root of x at 4. Pero instead na subtraction ng gamitin for the conjugate, ito ay addition. Ganon din yung multiply natin sa denominator. The numerator will now be square root of x minus 4 times square root of x plus 4. You take the square of uh, square root of x, that is just x, minus, this is 4 times 4, 16. Ang denominator naman natin ay x minus 16 times the square root of x plus 4. Wag muna nating i-multiply using FOIL method yung denominator kasi as you may notice, yung numerator natin may x minus 16, yung denominator din natin may exact same term. That is why we can divide them 
para matanggal na yung factor na yun, ang maiwan na lang sa numerator ay 1 at sa denominator ay square root of x plus 4. We'll take its limit as x approaches 6. Continue natin dito. Ito, hindi na siya pwedeng magkaroon ng indeterminate answer kasi yung numerator natin, it's already 1, never na siyang magiging 0. Kaya pwede na nating i-direct apply yung mga limit theorems. Dito sa denominator na may square root, i-direct apply ko na yung radical rule kung saan ipapasok sa loob ng square root yung limit. And then, this is the limit of a constant 4. The numerator will be applied with the limit of a constant. This is just 1. We have here the square root of limit of x. So, ang value dito ay 16 plus the limit of a constant 4. Simplifying, we know that the square root of 16 is 4 plus 4. The answer for example number 3 is 1 over 8. So, ang pinupunta ko sa video na to, hindi agad na ang unang step ay gagamitin yung mga limit theorems na napakita natin sa previous video. Kung kaya pang masimplify yung given, isimplify muna. Using factoring or using conjugate or using FOIL method, depende kung ano yung hinihingi ng problem. In that way, ma-avoid natin yung possibility na yung answer ay maging indeterminate.